I mentioned Anne, Anne Valère Coster. Uh, she is a still life painter. And she is uh, the other one of the women who were in the French Royal Academy in the 18th century. You see, she lives a bit into the 19th century, as many of these artists do. Um, we're going to be doing a little comparison and showing some works of art by male artists as well. Let's show you that she definitely deserves to be a member of the French Royal Academy. In fact, um, I'll tell you my story about her. Uh, I am not a person who spends a lot of time uh, looking at still life paintings. I'm, uh, I do a lot of Renaissance art history and I, you know, I look at pictures with people in them. Um, and when I went to the Toledo Museum of Art and I went into this large room, I saw her um, still life. It was huge still life, to have two of them. And this still life was in our textbook as an unknown location, obviously had been acquired uh, by the Toledo Museum of Art. And clear across the room, I went, could that be a Valère Coster? And it was. <laughs> it was just so outstanding. And we'll see that because I do have some nice details to show you. Um, as we said, she became a French, member of the French Royal Academy uh, even before uh, Le Bilgiard and uh, Vigée Lebrun. And we're going to see, she has allegorical still lifes, if you will. Uh, this is a very, uh, what can I say, very complex uh, allegory of the visual arts. And you can see, of course, bus and uh, the uh, cast of the uh, uh, Morghese torso, this is that, that uh, classical, that broken classical statue in the center. The actual original of that was a uh, work of art that uh, Michelangelo seems to have been uh, much taken with. Uh, so there's sculpture, it's certainly represented. Uh, painting, you can see the palette. Uh, architecture with the uh, uh, L square and uh, drawings. And then not just the visual arts, but also music, the allegory of music, uh, with different musical instruments. Uh, just, this is very, very rich and ornate, as you can see. Um, but she does some, she has a wide range of still life painting. Um, this painting, Still Life with Ham and Radishes, has been called, I just hear this phrase that uh, some of her uh, still lifes elicit, they say, an ode to good plain food. And what it is, is variations on the color red. You have different reds in the ham, which is sliced. And you have the red of the radishes. And then, of course, you have uh, just a little touch of, of green in the foliage. And there seems to be uh, some more leaves sticking out here and some darker colors and some whites. And, of course, the sh light shining off uh, possibly a pewter plate, possibly silver. Um, but. It's, it's just beautifully, beautifully done. Uh, not as lavish and ornate a composition as we saw before. Now, I thought what would be interesting was I found some pictures of, by Chardin, who is a uh, older uh, 18th century uh, painter who's very famous for his still lives, a French painter who's very famous for his still lives. Um, and it's interesting to sort of compare them. Uh, here is uh, a similar subject, looks like a piece of meat there, uh, Kitchen Still Life uh, by uh, Chardin. Um, and I think that the Valère Coster just stands up beautifully to it. Um, in fact, in many ways, I think hers is a richer uh, painting. I mean, this in the, the colors and the reflections. So another picture by her. So once again, very simple. This is just ordinary food. Uh, bread, fruit, preserves, wine, just laid out very simply, still life with round bottle. And then there is the white tureen. And one of the things that's a little difficult is to um, capture the colors. And so um, I've tried. I don't know if I have the exact white that is in the painting. I have not seen this painting. Um, so I'm taking it from various reproductions. This is a play of white on white. So you have the white terrain. Uh, you have the steam rising from it. You have the white cloth uh, and the contrast with a crusty 
dark bread. Uh, and you may notice that there's a, a, a several kind of diagonals. The whole composition, you have a, a peak where one of the um, uh, bottles is, and, and uh, you can kind of follow it down through the bread. Or you have the diagonal of the soup ladle's handle sticking out, going the other direction, which is paralleled by the way the um, um, round uh, lid to the terrain is sort of uh, off to one side at a diagonal. Um, it's a very simple meal. You know, it's basically bread and soup. And so it has been suggested that this, uh, not only the simplicity of the color, keeping these uh, very neutral colors with uh, whites and, and, uh, and uh, neutrals, uh, also is in some of the, the meal itself. And it's sort of, once again, I said that ode to, to good plain food, but uh, domestic thrift as a virtue. Uh, you can have good food. Of course, the French want good food. If it's simple food, it can be good food. Now, there was a French painter who painted uh, a white-on-white -white picture and, and often did very luxurious meals. So it's been suggested this might be a critique of it. I tried to find a picture, and uh, the picture I found on the web looked a little yellowish. So once again, I'm not sure what shades of white these actually are. Uh, but this is Audrey's still life with a white duck against a white wall uh, with a white basket, white uh, candle, white paper, white cloth. Uh, so this idea of, yes, I'm skilled enough to paint a variety of whites is uh, one of the things that's going on there. And the other, as we said, was you know, the simplicity of uh, the food and the virtue of uh, food. And I did find not an identical subject with the Chardin, but sort of, sort of similar colors. Um, his tobacco box here is, is a, you know, a darker brown, and the, the white of the uh, very simple um, pitcher and cup you know, sort of standing in front of it. This is the painting that I saw um, by Valère Coster and was uh, quite astonished by it. <laughs> It's a very large still life. Uh, it's in, now in the Toledo Museum of Art. And uh, this one is not good plain food. This is a luxurious uh, dinner um, with silver vessels and uh, lobster as, I guess, the main course, or one of the courses anyway. Uh, the colors are quite rich, starting with the red of the lobster, uh, you know, silver being reflected. Um, and uh, the textures are rather wonderful because you've got the texture of the object, but you've got the wonderful strokes of the paint. <laughs> and uh, that's something that she just is, is incredibly accomplished with. Uh, and one of the things that's really interesting is seeing the different objects reflected in that vessel. So I did take lots of uh, details. And uh, here you can see lobster with details. And the different, note, note the reflections though, because those are really uh, interesting. Playing, of course, with the different shapes. Uh, and you can see your brush strokes, as well as the, uh, the actual textures of the objects. Um, the, the picture, which is another very large still life, I was going to say a companion, but I don't know if they were originally intended to be a companion, uh, but this is also in the Toledo Museum of Art, is a game piece, a still life with the dead animals. And uh, there you can see them up close, once again, a lot of the different textures.